Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. Anyway, yeah, these are really starting to do good. Um, you remember the last time we put these in the lime, and the scales are really starting to come off now. See here, look. So they're ready to come off. Yeah, they don't even have to scrape them. They're, they're not all the way, but they're pretty dang close, and they're coming right off. Look at here. See? So anyway, once these scales are gone, uh, then we can soak them in water and get the lime out of them and put them into tanning. So why don't you guys grab a cup of coffee, and I'll go ahead and get these off, and we'll lay them out, and then we'll go over to the bench and have a cup of coffee and BS a little. All right, I uh, I shook the scales off of some of that, uh, some of those tails, and some of them still need a little bit more time. So I put them all back in there, and uh, we'll give them a little bit more time. Um, one one tail, all the scales come off, but the black, the darkness of the tail stayed on the on the leather, and it's not supposed to. It's supposed to come off kind of white. So, uh, and then they all are coming off really good, um, like you saw there. But there's some of them like on the edges and whatever. They still they just need a little more time in there. Probably tomorrow I'll clean them off, and uh, then I'll put them in the. I'll put them in some tan and solution and uh, be just in time for the next video. We'll, we'll get there. I want to catch you up a little on this thing. Uh, so the boss told me to go ahead and fix it. Uh, the internals on it. This is the 1894 pre-war one. And uh, that Homestead gun parts, they're on the internet. They're in Arizona. Check them out. Uh, Homestead, they uh, they had all the parts I needed. Um, so we're uh, the last time I took this, I, I did I worked on this, I took it all apart and kind of figured out what we need in there. And if you remember correctly, the time before that, when I went to shoot it, it just dented the primers and didn't go off. Um, well, just a couple days ago, when I took it apart and kind of straightened things up, figured out what I need. Um, I, uh, I took it out and shot it, and it shot fine. And it was pretty dang accurate, and the barrel looks really good. When I could look straight down the barrel, because all the parts are out of it, man, it looks good. Um, there's a couple parts that need, this pin's broken. It goes through here, and uh, I got one of them coming. And then I'm going to solve the headspace problem with an oversized block. And I got it big enough that I can fit it down. And then we need a, we need a, uh, back screw here is boogered up pretty good anyway that kind of catching you up and then this is going to be this baby will be good and it'll be under the seat of somebody's pickup truck i'm pretty sure <laughs> so, uh anyway you guys um saw the video with the uh, 300 winchester mag and the krieger barrel a lot of you guys were asking where the snow went well <laughs> That, that's an older video that I wanted to re uh, I wanted to redo <clears throat> so um, yeah well I have that rifle here and you saw how well it shoots it's good that I'll tell you when uh, this, this rifle here going into the history again um, I only have a few rifles that I keep that are mine the rest of them I do for other people or I do for for uh, different magazines or writing or whatever um, this one here, I bought in Spokane at a gun show, probably 98, 99, somewhere in there. I don't believe 97. Anyway, it was a uh, Sendero, Remington Sendero, and it was in 300 Winchester Magnum. And all it was was the rifle. It had a, the Sendero tapered stock, and it just had a... Um, the Picatinny rail. It just had a, it had a small rail on it. And I bought it then, and I took it out, and it shot sub-minute angle right 
now. Well, I had to do a little bit of loading work, but it went right to sub minute angle, so I thought, nah, this is going to be a keeper. And I shot that barrel until it started opening up. Still a good hunting barrel, and I still have it over here. Um, but I took it off, and I decided to go with a Krieger barrel. And this is the first Krieger barrel I ever had experience with. I'll tell you what, you can have them make it, or you can buy it out of the, he's got, they've got a lot of them on the rack, and they, they list on their website what they have in stock. And uh, it's a stainless steel barrel, and uh, I'll tell you what, when I shot this, and when I sighted this gun in, um, I, I did, uh, I did break it in, you know, cleaning it after every three shots, then five shots, and cleaning it after every ten shots, and so forth. I don't believe I had to. I mean, it came right there, right, ready to go, and it shot really good. It's a 26-inch barrel, and it's threaded, and uh, the only thing that this one doesn't have that the uh, original Sendero had was the uh, flutes, so it's a little bit heavier. Um, it, it had an HS Precision stock, which I do still have over there, and, but I painted this uh, with a uh, powder coat, and I put a stock on that when I was building rifles, this was a signature stock from HS Precision that I put on my rifles. And it was a little, it's a little lighter than the big stock that was on there. And uh, of course I did the trigger work and put this deal back here, cheek, cheek rest. Um, and I did that about, oh, two or three years ago. So I had this rifle for a long time shooting it right off the rack until I uh, decided to modify it. <clears throat> so then come along a little while, uh, extractor broke. And I'll tell you, with those Remington extractors, I am really surprised that it broke because as feeble looking as that thing is, that's one of the most durable extractors I've ever seen. I've never seen one broke, but very rare. Um, usually on the, the uh, 760s, the pumps, they break because people really rack them. But not much on the bolt. So it broke. And what I ended up doing after I found out that I can't drill a teensy, teensy hole in the bolt to put a uh, Seiko extractor on there without breaking the breaking the drill bit off. <clears throat> so I ordered a bolt. And this bolt, well, it's not going to come off there now. All I had to do to headspace it was take some off the back of the, uh, it was close, it was within 10 thousandths. And I had to just uh, work the back of the, uh, the locking lugs um, to where it would close in headspace. And so I headspaced it, and of course it's got 100% lock up, you know, contact between the lugs and, and the inside of the bolt, uh, inside of the receiver. And as you saw, it's a, it's a tack driver and it'll shoot the thousand yard I can go out right now and set this up and use my old dope and bam, I'll go right in. So this one stopped with a Leupold with the target turrets on it. Uh, it's a 4.5 4 by 14. I have one that has a little more power and I may just put it on here. Um, it's definitely a long range gun. I don't shoot long range but uh, at animals. but this one would do it if, if the chance was ever to come around. So, anyway, that's all I got to say about this rifle. Get you a cup of coffee, and uh, we'll come back here in a few minutes. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention, though, on this bolt. First off, it has this, uh, it's a threaded deal where you can change and put a round bolt on, or this T-bolt, or whatever style bolt you want, which is kind of cool. I have a round bolt. I like this one. And uh, I like it because it's a little bit longer. Um, the other thing about that bolt, it come with a Seiko extractor on it. So it didn't, that was the whole idea to changing it was, I, I could have put that um, Remington extractor in, but I, I really wanted to put a Seiko extractor in there. And so I did, and uh, it's a superior extractor, I think. So uh, any other rifles that I have that problem, I'll, I'll send them off and, and have that company uh, either make me a bolt with a Seiko in it or put a Seiko extractor into the bolt that I have 
I'll send it to him, one or the other. Um, hey, I went out and did a little scout, and I got a few critters on film, so let's go over there for a minute. Some of my deer are starting to come back into this area. They like this side of the hill because the sun hits it all day. And when it's Sunday, it's warmer. It was like minus three this morning. So when it's sunny, it's warmer. And uh, plus, it's easier to find food. Okay, so I'll save the weather report for last. Um, we've been having some great goofy weather. Uh, we're going back into a cold trend. We got... We're getting snow three to five inches at a time. And so it's building up. Yesterday I put the plow on the creeper over there and, and plowed it, plowed out everything. But then tonight we're getting back into the cold temperatures. And probably Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday this week it's going to be cold again. And then it's going to get back up and then we're going to get some more snow. And then it's going to go back down in the colder temperature. Anyway, it seems like this up and down crap is going to take on till probably another 10 days and then after that we might have a little warmer nights like in the teens or 20s which would be welcome it what it does is it's melting the top of the snow now and then it freezes at night so the snow is really crunchy and crispy and it's really hard to move around in and plus the ground's froze up really solid so anyway it's going to be a while uh, I got some rabbits I got to shoot, and I think I'm going to shoot them with the, the double fowler. And uh, when we do, we'll be using some of these tools to, to work with it. Uh, sometimes when I'm working out of the pocket, I just like a, a small shot pouch, capper, something to measure powder and shot, small shot flask. And then I'll usually have a pouch, and it'll have my waddings in it. And usually when I'm just going to go out and shoot a little bit, that's, I just put that in my pocket. So, anyway, that's all I got this time. Please stay with the channel, and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a great day.